Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Experimental RC. In this week's video, I'm going to be doing some wind tunnel testing to compare annular wings to straight wings. I'd also like to apologize that this week's episode is a bit late. I've had a pretty busy week. I did some cool things like I flew in this Cessna and I went to an RC planes auction where I bought this plane for $6, not including the electronics. And I haven't got it to fly yet, but it looks like it'll fly really well. Um, also, here's another plane I got. It's a model of the space shuttle, and it launches by what is called piggyback launch, which means that a bigger plane flies with the space shuttle on its back, kind of like that, and then when it gets going fast enough, the space shuttle launches off and glides down. I really can't wait to try it, it should be really cool. Anyways, back to the comparing annular wings to straight wings, I'll first do a walk around of the wind tunnel I built. Here is my wind tunnel, as you can see it's built out of wood and plexiglass. This is the viewing chamber where the model would go and the top hinge is on so it's easy to get to it. That's looking back to where the air is sucked in. And that's looking forward to where the vacuum hooks up to the wind tunnel. At the back here is what's called the buffering chamber, and it's made out of corrugated plastic. And its job is to eliminate currents from the air before they enter the chamber. This is the front where the vacuum would go to suck the air through. To make the smoke, I used a combination of incense sticks and soldering paste, and that got fairly good results and made a lot of smoke. I tested four main things in the wind tunnel, two different straight wings, and I also tested an annular wing at a high angle of attack and an annular wing at a zero degree angle of attack. Here's the straight wing in the wind tunnel. And as you can see when you slow it down, it creates quite a lot of vortices uh, trailing behind it. It's pretty difficult to see at normal speed, but it's really easy to see when you slow it down. The vortices greatly reduce the efficiency of an aircraft, as you can imagine. This is a straight wing with a high aspect ratio, which means it's longer and thinner than the other wing. When you uh, slow this one down, you can see really how the vortices form. They kind of curl up against the wing almost, and same with trailing. Other than that, though, the airflow is smoother around this wing than the other wing. When you reverse the clip, you can really see how the vortices form. This is the annular wing, and as you can see, the air flows very smoothly around it. But when you slow it down, you can see small vortices forming off the... Uh, the airfoil. However, these vortices are much smaller than the other vortices from the straight wings. This is the annular wing at a 20 degree angle of attack. An airplane with an annular wing would have to fly at a high angle of attack to produce enough lift to go level. And as you can see, it creates patches of turbulence, but other than that, it's still pretty smooth airflow. Much smoother than the airflow around the straight wings. And wingtip vortices are also a really big problem when it comes to safety of aircraft, because as you can imagine, if a small airplane like a Cessna got caught up in a wingtip vortice, it would really throw the Cessna around, especially if it was a vortice from a bigger plane. So any way to reduce or eliminate wingtip vortices would uh, stop a lot of planes from crashing and make everything a lot safer. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe because I've been working on plans for an annular wing airplane. Uh, and a new video for that will be up right away. Also, you can check out my website for more information.